100 for 100. The podcast wherein we, I, uh, take 100 movies that um, I think every new movie watcher should watch for the first time. And I rank them from 100 to 1 in these trying times. And then I, uh, I put up with a 100 word review for each one of them. Is how we get the name for this house show, 100 for 100. I'm your host, C. Um, you may notice that things sound a little bit different these days. That's because they closed down the podcast studio, man. They took my only love away from me. Why they don't love me no more, man? So it's just me at home. Me at home and my microphone and my laptop for what will be the last 17, I do believe. 17 bits of business is coming into the home stretch. 400 for 100, man. If you listen to yesterday's episode, we did Lawrence of Arabia. Um, man, damn good movie. If you, uh, if you listened to yesterday's episode, that means you were just now finishing <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia. I think that things are like nine hours long, but today, today we get into number 17 on our list. And number 17 is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's from the year 2000. Directed by Ang Lee? Ang Lee? I don't know. I'll call and ask him. Uh, here's the 100 word review for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <clears throat> One of the most beautiful and poetic movies on this list, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, proves Ang Lee holds mastery over both action and storytelling. A wuxia film that chooses to focus on the characters over the action, the film centers around Li Mu Bai and Yu Shu Lin, four forbidden lovers who attempt to keep hold of the green destiny sword. Tackling themes of gender roles in society, of identity and choice, the film serves to please both martial arts fans and art house fans. Complete with a sublime score from Tan Dun and Yo-Yo Ma, Crouching Tiger is a masterpiece. Now, I say it pleases both martial arts fans and art house fans. It is possible to be both. That's right. It is possible to be both people. Uh, this movie, whew, this movie is why I failed calculus class. <laughs> I, I do believe for me, Crouching Tiger still holds the record. For a movie I've seen most times in theaters at six or eight. I can never remember which one. But man, I had an evening calculus class. And sometimes it'd be like, mm, do I really need to learn about numbers? I don't think so. Do I really need to watch some, some people talk some Chinese shit that I wouldn't know about? The subtitles weren't there? Hell yeah. So that's what I would go do instead. It hit me at that perfect time where, uh, uh, you know, I was loving old 70s kung fu flicks ah, i just discovered that bit of business over there and then right months after i dove into this trove of wonderful old badly dubbed kung fu films this came out and i was like oh this is what the, the medium could be because one thing ang lee knows how to do it's tell a great story no matter what the genre is jim and yeah, jim and i man aside we won't talk about that um uh chang and fat michelle yo hold this movie down as well as uh zhang ji I do believe that's this is one of her, her first movies, or is it just the first time us Americans were introduced to her? Either way, there is life that exists outside of America, so she might have done other movies that I don't know about. Uh, yeah, uh, all three of them. Uh, these are the three anchor pieces for this movie. Um, you know the the idea that uh, you know the Chow Yun Fat's character Li Mu Bai is searching for revenge um, against the one who killed his master this whole time. And, you know, he, he gets that yeah, vengeance. That's spoilers if you haven't seen a 20-year-old film by now. But it comes at a cost. Um, uh, you know, the, the forbidden forbidden love between uh, his character and Michelle Yeoh's character, Yu Shu Lin, is one of my favorite. I mean, you got uh, In the Move for Love out there, right? Uh, Cratch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon is right up there with it as well. But Romeo and Shakespeare, we, <laughs> we don't need that around here. We don't need to, that cultured shit. Um... The fight scenes, I mean, when it comes to Wuxia uh, films, the fight scenes are definitely less fights, less Jet Li, and more uh, ballet almost. Uh, it, like choreographed dances. There's a beauty to the fight scenes, um, assuming that it is well shot. And these are well shot. You know, uh, you, they have to have the wire work going on there. And it, 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 this movie was good enough that that kind of film had its presence in pop culture in the U.S. for about a good solid, I would say, five, six years, man. We got some good shit coming out of that. Hero came out of that. House of Flying Daggers came out of that. Um, and other movies. <laughs> but yeah, Crouching Tiger 
Hidden Dragon is one that is one of those where I firmly believe you need to watch it in its original language. I would read the subtitles so you can hear the emotion conveyed coming from the original people who were speaking those lines to really get the heft and the weight of it. And like I was talking about the uh, the theme of gender roles in society, man, you got a young girl who's, you know, due to be married off, and she's like, fuck that, that's not what I want. I, I have my own dreams and goals. I have my own things that I want to do in life. And, you know, you have this you know, the other guy who's like, you know, you don't marry that dude, marry me, the, the better fit for her, and she knows that. Um so, you know, the ending is, man, the ending is some rough emotional business. If you haven't seen this movie, um, I don't, I'm not sure if it's streaming anywhere. Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2 uh, is on Netflix. It's, I do believe it's their first original movie. Do me a favor, never watch that. <laughs> but Netflix might have the original Crash and Tiger. So, do yourself a favor, queue up number 17 on the list. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon.